My name is Larry Laverman, and I'm the chair of the Distinguished Speaker Series at Carleton University. I would first like to recognize some of our guests. First, the Ambassador of the Republic of Latvia, His Excellency Carlos Eichenbaum. The Ambassador of Estonia, Her Excellency Gita Kalmet. And the Ambassador of Austria, His Excellency Stefan Peringer. We also welcome members of the embassies of the Czech Republic, Kazakhstan, the Philippines, and the United States of America. As well, we're delighted to receive and welcome the President of the Baltic Federation of Canada, Andres Chesteris. And also, we have with us two former Canadian ambassadors, the former Canadian ambassador to Switzerland, Robert Collette, and the former Canadian ambassador to Finland, Craig uh, McDonald. And I've got papers that are sticking together. And we also have members of the Canadian government, students and faculty from Carleton University and the University of Ottawa. And now it is my great pleasure to ask the director of the Center for Security, Intelligence and Defense Studies at the Norman Patterson School of International Affairs, Dr. Andrea Charon, to introduce our guest speaker. Andrea. Thank you very much. It's a, really an honor and a pleasure to be asked to introduce our guest speaker today. It's Lieutenant General Grauba, who graduated from the Riga Technical School in 1976. In subsequent years, he attended a number of the NATO staff colleges, including the Netherlands Defence College, the Royal College of Defence Studies in the UK, the NATO Defence College in Italy, and at the National Defence University Industrial College of the Armed Forces in the United States. After several years in the National Guard of Latvia and the National Armed Forces of Latvia, in 2003 he was named Deputy Secretary in the Ministry of Defence responsible for NATO integration. In 2008 he was named the Latvian Military Representative to NATO and to the European Union. In 2010, Lieutenant General Grauba became Latvia's Chief of Defence until February of this year when he retired from that position. Over his career, his many achievements have been recognized by his receiving numerous Latvian awards of merit, as well as foreign distinctions, including the Royal Norwegian Order of Merit and the Republic of France, the L'Ordre National de la Région d'Honneur. And given that the Canadian-led NATO enhanced forward presence in uh, Latvia was established at a ceremony just yesterday at Adegi in Latvia, it is a very timely topic indeed. So please uh, help me welcome Lieutenant General Raymond Grauba. No, thank you. I feel wings somewhere here, you know. Of this introduction, so this mics, most mics are working. Ambassadors, ambassadors, professors, and friends, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor, honor and pleasure to be here today. As, uh, as, as, as I said, to, to try to bit explain, um, to give Latvian perspective on, on, on security situation in our region. But I probably would share on the way I see with Estonia and Lithuania pretty much the same way. And, and, and maybe to give our insight how we see how we see Russian behavior, actions, and, 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 and even even war. There is a war right now, as we speak. It's not a conventional war. It's a hybrid war, cyber war. It's real wars which are going on. Uh, but uh, before I go further, I will. Uh, uh, kind of try to, to keep uh, these stereotypes about the general presentations alive. Uh, namely, you believe that the general should start with a joke. I, I will start with a joke presentation just to, to warm up a bit uh, the audience. And, and again, it's a bit soldier joke. I can warn you, uh, but, but, but anyway, I like myself. Um, three soldiers were captured by bad guys. You know, and, and, and a corporal, uh, a captain, and a general. And and uh, since we all know backgrounds of the of the this terrorist groups, leader of terrorist groups, and all, in average they are well educated. Somewhere in a degree has degree from Euro European mainly universities, and and he wants to be very human, kind of according to his education at least and his background. And he says, okay, 
before we execute you, uh, pick a last wish, you know, and, and, and we'll, 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 we'll follow these traditions. And Corporal says, actually, all I need, help me, help me, give me uh, just cold beer, I'm fine. I'm, I'm okay. Uh, officer says it's called Chardonnay, it's, it's good too. General says, so give me four hours and I will give a presentation, a speech to, I will explain why you are, we are right, you are not right, and, and why we are here. And then kind of, and then Corporal shakes a hand. May I change my last, uh, last, last, uh, last, last wish? Yeah, you may. Uh, could you kill me before General speaks, you know? <laughs> so, I um, mean, so let's assume it's, it's a bit proper. Um, yes, my, 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 my presentation, uh, as I said, I will cover this challenge, the security challenge things, and uh, particularly a bit, a bit more closer to, uh, regarding to Canadian Lady FP. But I will start with Latvia first, because um, I would like to, to, to show you a couple of figures on, on our way of thinking, uh, not to leave impression that we are just security receivers. Uh, and then, um, National threat perception perspectives of Russia, of course, is uh, probably number one. They feel threatened, but we are sharing all security, security uh, challenges, issues, and threats like everyone. Migration, refugee crisis, global threats, uh, domestic, of course, we've got, we are newly developing, uh, developing economies, let's say so. So we've got, we've got uh, business to do back home too. But, but, but Russia, of course, is the top of our priority, but as I said, we are sharing uh, threat uh, perspectives with our, with our, with our um, European and, and, and Canadian and American friends. But we are not only receivers. We, I believe we have rights to ask for assistance or to show our, our uh, no, let's say, public opinion uh, worries regarding to our neighbor because we are very active. Since 96, we are participating in numerous uh, of operations. And these are uh, figures from the last. And this year, we are in NATO, we are in EU. I would like to stress in EU operations, United Nations operations, coalition operations. In Mali, for instance, we are in two operations, both MINUSMA and the UMT uh, training mission, TM. Uh, we've got uh, instructors in Iraq, uh, we've got in Afghanistan. What is not mentioned here, uh, I have, we have not anymore, I had as a chief of defense, not anymore, but the retired, but we, Latvia, has uh, two training uh, instructor teams in Ukraine. They're training Ukrainian forces too. Uh, and, and, and then the number of, of uh, rapid reaction uh, response force, EU battle group, for instance, uh, Jeff and, and, and so on. So we are very active. So we are not only receivers, uh, the security providers too. Uh, and of course, uh, plants without resources just mirage. So we need to, 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 to paint this picture. And only we are behind Estonians. Uh, how to use opportunity to congratulate Estonia with a very successful ministry, uh, defense budget for the last six years, I believe, already. So at least, yeah. and um, but the chief defense and didn't, didn't, in my slide said not to go down to, to, to 14, for instance. In 14, I had just one percent of GDP, 1.4, 104, sorry, 104. Next year to this year we have on 1.7, well, I like that 1.74. Uh, next, we're going to, to double our budget in, in the last three and a half years. It's it's big challenge. As I said, we are facing all social issues and all other, um, like like country which is which is doing economically quite well, relatively well. But you see, this is this figures what I am very proud of. It means society and politicians that full support the defense system, taking into account security situation next to our neighborhood. So here we are, uh, Russian. Military strategy. I will probably not not cover this conventional piece, which is very obvious and, 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 and similar to any country who is trying to develop the countries. But I would like to speak about unconventional, and particularly about use of private military companies. This is new dangerous pattern, 
uh, of course, for Western, Western uh, let's say, part society, it's, it's not a new. Uh, that we have Blackwaters, we remember, and companies like that, you know. But however, these are private, real private companies controlled. You know, we, you know, we remember accidents, maybe too weak control or too, too, too little control over them. But anyway, they're real private companies, so-called uh, Russia's private companies and not private companies. And it's just, you know, if, if, you, if, you, if you dig deeper and look to, to, to these names and these members of these uh, private companies, uh, operators, you can see them happens to be retired just yesterday from uh, Russian Spetsnaz or uh, Airborne Division 76 or whatever. I mean, all the leading, uh, leading uh, commanding, I don't know how they name it, bosses or maybe commanders they call themselves still are with, uh, with military background, obviously, Russian military background. It's just another way how to, how to use after Crimea, lessons learned of Crimea, where they were not ready to, to, to send so-called liberators, uh, private liberators, or private companies are developing this concept very, 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 very strongly. Nuclear question, you know, they're spending a lot of money as a strategic deterrence and, 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 and to blackmail, to, to take a kind of hostage situation in Western society in case of conflict by, by, by threatening US nukes. It's not, hasn't happened yet, but we can see uh, we have such suspicions that is in developing these scenarios during uh, Zapad, for instance, exercise, and in a case, in a case, in the losing conventional conflict or whatever they could, could use nuclear nuclear posture. I already mentioned two wars going on already, hybrid and then cyber. These are real wars, you can see information operations, and, 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 and there's a real thin line between war and peace. And, 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 but I will, I will touch a bit this, this uh, later. I will come back to, to these examples. Um, internal logic of Russia. Means, ways, ends. You can argue what is first, uh, you may argue what is first. Ideology, Russia wants to back uh, to the glory of the Soviet Union uh, type of whatever, superpower. Uh, I would argue the instability of a regime, instability for their own just personal purposes. They want to keep power, they want to control their people, they want to run the country. The rest is just mechanics. Uh, of course, there is a Peter the Great way of thinking, and, and, and of course, it's easy to, 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 to use these arguments because uh, when you look back to 1991, for instance, Russia lost the territories where she, where she was. To, um, she was thrown, down, thrown back to the history so 250 years ago by Catherine the Great before they went to, 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 to down south to Ukraine, Crimea. Took there were the borders exactly when she was 250 years ago. It was difficult to to to, to accept, and, and it's easy uh, to brainwash. I would say people. Um, there is some. What, what scares me most? Maybe not this uh, rational, rational piece of uh, Russian behavior. There are economical tools, military tools, and these are relatively rational. But when the rationality comes to the game, is uh, facts and it's a lot of things are based on nationalism. Single nationalism, Russian nation superiority. It's a message how they talk back to their people. And this is, this uh, narrative is not used uh, to, towards West or not used in Western, Western whatever media. Nobody speaks about it, but they're talking back to the people. They're saying we are special. We are special. We are the only last uh, Christian, let's say, nation who keeps traditional Christian values. The rest are, I mean, whatever. Disappeared somewhere and, 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 and been, been, been kind of no, not, not using anymore. Um, uh, surrounded fortress, everyone wants to kill us, uh, destroy our system. And the only way how to, how to survive is to fight back because you know, surrounded fortress principles is if, they, if you lost, you will be killed anyway. The better to fight at least, there's a hope to, to survive. And, and the surrounded fortress principle is very heavily, heavily used. And, and 
I'm afraid this irrational part, this nationalism part, uh, is is what which drives Putin's personal and his surroundings behavior. I I like this analogy. Uh, uh, we all know how 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 dynamic of of of, of uh, avalanche works. You maybe can try to stop a couple first stones. Afterwards, you're on a table. It simply goes down. You can't control, and there's a internal dynamic within uh, within within avalanche. But we've seen from movies how to survive avalanche is run, run faster than avalanche, and maybe you will survive. And I have got feelings, and Putin is running a front of avalanche a bit in certain situations. He simply runs. He wants to survive. A he launch. It's it's difficult to stop uh, this kind of. Russia can thinking. Um, economically, Russia is very unique, and Soviet, Soviet former Soviet uh, republics or people are trained to, to to survive, to train to suffer for future. It was one of the cornerstones of the Russian uh, Soviet, not the Russian Soviet ideology. Uh, we don't have today enough food, whatever, uh, but 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 it's because we are working hard. For, to, 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 to prepare to go to communism and, and, and to, to, to leave, it, stay, leave it for our kids, grandkids, and stuff like that. So people are ready to suffer, but nationalism is in, it's very difficult to control. Very difficult to control. And of course, means. Well, it's pretty simple. Simple, simple. No, no, no need for explaining. Military, oil, gas, gas. It's why Russian, Russian pressure on this is weakening because of oil and gas prices, intelligence service, very strong, as you know, and of course, propaganda. Uh, this propaganda brainwash, uh, propaganda, this, I will, I will, again, I will, I will dig a bit deeper to, to, this, to this point. Uh, but else, I have uh, superpower and, and this Soviet thinking. There's a, not ever one pays attention, and there's a big, big difference between Soviet Union way of thinking, Soviet people, or ideology, way of thinking, and, 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 and current Russia. The Soviet Union was a role, communist ideology was all about multinationality. Russians, of course, Russians controlled, Russia controlled power, Russian national, let's say, people, Russian-speaking people. Uh, but we were talking about multinationalism. Why we countries like mine, like Estonia, maybe sur even survived? Because uh, and we're not uh, assimilated in very short notice for for this reason. They, they, everyone is friendly. We are multinational workers and Latin workers, or Soviet workers are friends to American workers. Uh, all we need just to to kick to kill bourgeois, you know, and, 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 and we'll be free and happy. So, uh, but it's what the multinationalism was a key word. Today it's not anymore multinationalism. Russia Russia has problems back home even within Russian Federation. Uh, there's a price to pay for, for Caucasus, for instance. Uh, we all know prosperity of, of Chechen Republic and, 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 and the reasons to that. This is a price to pay, but, 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 but this is nationalism. So just wanted to, to repeat, uh, not, to, not, to, not, to, not to step in trap and uh, drawing similarities with the Russian uh, ideology and Soviet Union. It, it's different, at least, uh, to, this, to this extent. This picture I like because it's it's no it's been drawn not not by by Western not by Latvian it's it's, it's Russian it's it's from Russian could read Studio 13 I don't know for whatever media was and, and it's Russian how Russian sees themselves it's why why we should explain because we can because we are strong we are special we are special the small peaks you know you see liberal very there's a flag. Uh, yeah, kind of gay flag, yeah, because everything is nice. You we'll see small, small background picture. The older generation remember the Soviet propaganda system uh, painting this kind of happy people, tractors moving, and everyone is happy, smiling. T shirt, and T shirt, very important to read what's written on T shirt. He, he represents our values heroes, fate, uh, Rodina, uh, no. Motherhood, mother, yeah, things like that, you know. Family, 
and, and, and yeah, we are representing, we are representing. But what's interesting, you see, even uh, this uh, cartoonist used the Red Star. Um, this Red Star is uh, old Soviet uh, Union military's uh, no belt. So things they represent in this picture even represent uh, Russia, but actually it's a kind of so Soviet Union sentiments. Yeah. It's, it's how they see themselves, at least some of them, number of them. Ambitious, short-term goals. Easy, you can see already it's ongoing operation, uh, uh, elections, Trump, we'll see, it's not the end yet, not yet. Um, of course, zone of interest, undermine NATO role in Baltic security allocation during the EFP to stay. But again, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will go again a bit deeper to this. Zapad, it's uh, this year highlight military. We will, we will see, we will see how this, what kind of scenarios they will train during the Zapad. Um, we have worries about this period, but 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 we will see. And of course, the restoration of NATO-Russia relations, but. For the pro at the same time, to make the West forget about Ukraine. Very simple, long-term goals. And this is most important. There shouldn't be any 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 kind of uh, uh, doubts or uh, hopes then about uh, Russia's uh, long-term goals. At least with this leadership, it's creating another geopolitical center, bipolar world, uh, and and and. And you see me. You can read yourself, actually, it means. In, uh, well, I would like to maybe stress myself, uh, but it's important for Canadian region, Canada, and this secures the Arctic region military in order to assure future kind of resource control. And this is new pattern. Uh, I don't know how, where Russia gets those, uh, needed resources, but they're building up the northern uh, capabilities, military capabilities, very, very actively, very strongly. What they do right now? You can read yourself. The first part uh, I will tell a bit about in the trends of Western military district. It's partly answer uh, to Russia's propaganda, a counter actually to Russia's propaganda. Then uh, she is kind of responding, just responding to NATO uh, behavior. Militarization in this military district uh, started much earlier than, uh, than NATO did any move in this region. At this 2008, as a military representative to NATO and the European Union in Brussels, I can prove you there was Russia was closer probably to join NATO than, uh, than Montenegro was uh, last year. Uh, there was even discussions, and then last last week happens, happens then Putin even even uh, even kind of approved it, saying as uh, they were considering as uh, the questions we'd like to join NATO. But I like the answer during one one reception, um, and uh, one of the toughest the hardliners uh, in the Russian propaganda um, uh, at this time an ambassador to European and NATO. Ragozin, Ragozin. Uh, somebody, someone raised a question to him, uh, why are you not joining NATO? Can I make a joke? You know, why are you not joining NATO? If you want to destroy, you can destroy from inside. Uh, whatever. And his answer was very interesting, actually. And from nowadays, eyes, it's very, very, very kind of meaningful. Uh, Russia, Russia doesn't join uh, coalitions. Russia creates coalitions. So, and, and this kind of already reflects the way, 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 of, way of thinking and, 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 and back then. Ostrov helicopter base, 26 kilometers from Latvian border. Riga, and then, by the way, Tallinn, capital Estonia, it's in, within operational range. If it's a helicopter base, we don't need to go into to military schools to understand if it's defensive nature, then only helicopter base should be kept something, you know, 150, 200 kilometers in depth, at least, to be operational, to try to defend the uh, country and, and, and border of country, not 26 kilometers within the range of long, long, long range artillery, artillery even. So, Riga is in operational range. Taking account 
then there is a, there, there is a airborne division, another 25 kilometers from this base, and, 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 and they one of the most strongest, strongest uh, uh, airborne, uh, no, sorry, Spetsnaz Brigade and airborne division. It's within 40 kilometers uh, radius, so then you understand the importance of this airborne base. Much before EFP project was announced by, by, by NATO, in NATO Warsaw Summit, Russia already created two new divisions. Uh, in, in, you'll see in the picture in the Western Military District. Another one down in south, Southern Military District. Totally three military, three, three divisions in, in the Western direction. So it's, it's, I remember when I was a child, first year, second year, 2010-11, I approached many my, my, my NATO chief defense by inviting them to take part in an exercise on Latvian soil. Uh, the most honest answers were, I want, no, I can't, I can't go because the Russia is too close. Let's not provoke Russia, you know. But Russia did after they didn't need any provocation. They only blaming West to, to provoking them. She, she did what she wanted to do simply, uh, and, 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 and always was able to find kind of excuse, blaming, uh, blaming NATO. What worries us most? There are a lot of military activities in our region. Uh, uh, in 2015, uh, there was 150 uh, the Alpha scrambles. It means uh, fighter jets took off to, to, to follow Russian planes with a fly, flying provocative manner next to Estonian, Latvian borders particularly. They even uh, violated the national airspace of Estonia a couple times. So just it became a routine. But these are kind of, as I said, became a routine. But what is me most, from a military perspective, you see, they are creating so-called anti-access area denial capabilities. Means they have air defense systems, they have uh, tactical uh, uh, nuclear missile uh, capabilities, uh, coast guard surface-to-surface -surface, uh, defense uh, rockets, uh, systems like Bastion and others. So they were able to cut off a region in case of if trouble, and they are having the three regions. One is in the Baltic, Baltic states, you see from Kaliningrad, another one is Crimea, down in Black Sea, and then in Syria as well. But Syria is uh, just, 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 just trying to establish. Yeah, Latvia, Estonia, and this region in general, is, uh, Lithuania is, is, is covered, uh, and, 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 and from military, of course, it's can scarce us, uh, threatened us. Uh, in case of provocations or even use of military force, uh, they can cut off this region by using these full uh, this forces, these capabilities. It's why we believe we need EFP on soil already uh, before they would be able to use uh, the, the, the power military capabilities to cut off region. So it's way how we see Putin behaves. He de-escalates situation by escalating new one. Uh, it's it's technique, I think, used for ages, for thousands of years already in the empire to solve internal internal problems, wherever are economical or others, uh, by, by, by escalating, by having uh, external problems. It's, 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 it's all old method, old technique, and it's very very, very well used by, by Putin and his, his supporters. Foreign post success stories. He needs success stories. He portrayed himself as a, as a, as a strong man and, 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 and a powerful state. Uh, you remember the slide about ideology, ideological base. And he needs. And I was discussing with a friend of mine from when I was a with Western countries, he kind of said, no, you know, the escalation, maybe the escalation by the new one, its concept uh, wouldn't work. Then I, I asked a question that I'm going to ask to you. Send your, your capital newspapers. How many times Ukraine was mentioned in the first page after Syria? No, before the time to time, the second page, at least. Where Ukraine is now? Sixth? If there is a Ukrainian news at, at, at all about Ukraine, Syria, if, if some security issues or conflict-related news, Syria dominates. 
around Syria. Of course, terrorists, but no, I'm talking about Putin particularly. So it does work. It does work, I believe. And, and, and it's why next step, it depends on economic crisis at home. New military endeavor where challenge NATO. If, if it follows this logic, then three Baltic states are the weakest link. Again, narrow down. The weakest link probably is Latvia for for a number of reasons. For few, maybe not so many, but anyway. So it means, yeah, this logic, this logic worries us definitely. Yeah. Who is next? We had, it's why we need to prevent. We need to deter. We are not. We don't need to fight, but we need to send strong message. There is a real red line, because Putin, since very beginning of uh, being in power, he was. He was overstepping uh, red line, so-called red line. The time to time, one country, another one announced, this is red line, you no, no, no. Putin steps over, then the red line becomes kind of pink one, you know, uh, even change the color to white at the end of the, of the day. So we haven't drawn, we haven't, we haven't put real red line. And this is, after Syria, I think we must be very, very serious. Oh, yeah, I put this slide, uh, explain about this. Uh, Austro helicopter base. Just what I would, would like to add, you see this uh, miles, but anyway, this, this Riga, my capital Riga, Estonia, is a uh, town in itself, uh, of north more, but anyway, distance pretty approximately is the same. Uh, but what's the most important? It's not small base, it's brigade sized base. There are about, uh, during exercise period, more, it's a bit class, class stuff, but they classified. But I would say more than 50 helicopters per any given uh, time, uh, period of time. So, uh, and, and the most important, and they are most modern, most modern combat, combat uh, soft supporting and KA, for instance, KA-52. So, well known piece. Uh, from, I mentioned already, uh, anti-aerial access denial anti-serial denial uh, principle. We are attached to, to connected with land, uh, let's say land with, with NATO country, Poland, then about 120, I believe, was so-called Shuvalki, famous Shuvalki Gap. By cutting off the Shuvalki Gap, was there, by the way, Russians exercised uh, during the Zapad 2013. That is the exercise, this cut-off operation. Uh, probably they will do this year as well, but no, we'll see. Uh, so this connection is very, very important. Another point, what, what, is, what the General Ben Hodges, uh, commanding officer of U.S. Uh, Army Europe, uh, you can read, or maybe I'll read for, for last words. The thing I worry about the most is freedom of movement. The Russians are able to move huge formations, a lot of equipment, a long distance, very fast. As they have proved during the snapshot exercise or, uh, and, and the Zapad too, uh, they'll be able to move very short notice, strategic distances, uh, large force up to 10,000, for instance, 24, 48 hours from uh, central military district, from the Ural, Ural area down to western military district. It's proved. Uh, and then we don't have such, such response capabilities in, in terms of uh, speed. And you can read combinations of these factors with a lot of the Russian battle. Baltics from the rest of the NATO and then access to all air reinforcements over air, sea, and land. So it's why we need permanent units on, on Latvian soil, on Baltic soil, on, on Poland soil, eastern, let's say, frontier of NATO soil. This is a very busy slide, uh, but this is one of the most important slides to, in tonight. And even, you don't need to read. All you need actually to look colors. This I put all activities together started from uh, 2013, 27th of May 2013. Red ones are number of, uh, of, of soldiers, uh, units, uh, and doing any activities. The, the blue ones are NATO. Uh, light blue, national, multinational, with multinational participations, for instance. In a battle soil, it's, it's famous cyber strike. It's not a NATO exercise. It's US-led exercise with with the Baltic countries' participation. Sometimes a few few more, few more few more nations come. These proportions are real. It's drawn by computer. You can see where is NATO 
how, how, you, how you can say now we NATO were provoking? The biggest, the highest NATO dog, NATO exercise took place in uh, it was, uh, uh, November, September, November of 2015, Friday juncture. Guess where it took place? In Spain. Farthest possible corner from Russia. It was 15 after Crimea already. Even then, NATO wanted not to provoke Russia. The, we had this exercise, uh, we sent Baltic Battalion together with Estonians and Lithuanians, this exercise, very costly for us. But anyway, it was conducted on Portugal, and Portugal too, actually, both. Portugal and, and Spanish soil, as far as possible for Russia, not to provoke after Crimea. Who is provoking whom? I believe our response is not sufficient. It's late all the time in terms of numbers, in terms of act numbers of activities. And all I, when it, how to counter Russian propaganda, all you need to draw this chart. Take a timeline and numbers. That's it. It's open source, by the way. It's not classified. Uh, I, 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 I can't show classified. Believe me, classified even worse looks. Because, because it's, it's, uh, we cannot trust the figures what, what you really see in open sources. No, I mean, I mean officially announced at this Russian side. But we all know from, from a Western kind of culture, military culture, nobody is lying about these real figures. If there were, there were 3,500 troops on Latvian soil, there were 3,500. No more. This is this answer. This answer regarding to provocations. Very simple. Very simple. When you go back even this way, is even, even as, I, as I mentioned, I couldn't uh, convince uh, my friends, good friends, even per personal friends, to participate in a you know, exercise in Latin. So there was one said that, uh, oh, I was giving this example, one said that platoon water purification unit, platoon size. No, at least flag was there, but no capability, not just uh, difficult to provoke Russia with water purification unit, you know, Latin so we have plenty of water salt, uh, freshwater lakes, like like here in in, 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 in Canada, Ontario province, no less and, and, but, but anyway, at least they were the hybrid warfare strategy. You can read yourself. Um, I would like to maybe stress a couple of them. Create information for false narratives, conspiracy theories. This is the way how, how, how it works. You know it very, very well. But I will, I will stop to two last ones. Truth doesn't exist. exist. This is very head of new, rather new narrative for Russia. Truth doesn't exist. Everyone lying. Sometimes happens we uh, sending wrong message, but no, we can excuse. I will, we will, will punish who did it. I mean, but West does definitely more than we. Truth doesn't exist. And then people get confused. And it's both sides. This narrative works for, for, for Western societies and back, 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 back to Russia. Very, very efficiently, very efficiently. Reflexive control. Um, the best example of ref reflection control was uh, um, where Saakashvili, when, how, how the uh, war or military conflict or war uh, or in, in, in Georgia begin. It's still kind of, nobody knows who shot first, but no, who did the first? Let's say to push the pull the trigger. Uh, no, probably probably Sakashvili, uh, probably Sakashvili. But 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 the control task was they were provoking in a way they predicted this move. They knew psychological mindset. They knew that he 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 he, he will he will trigger. He will task to trigger. It's because because they, they they were able to read him. And this kind of again new phenomena. There are a lot of a lot of examples. I don't know how I put this slide. I have a backup, back, backup slide. They did very, very effective uh, this operation against uh, minister, uh, minister of Defense of, of, of Sweden once. But I will be come back later in the Q&A session. So information campaign execution. What the strengths of, of, of the system is? It's it's controlled and 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 and, and, and then controlled top down, very significant, very serious. You see, Kremlin develops all these kind of narratives. Our audience segmentation, which you can see down uh, in, a, in the bottom of the slide, develop uh, doctrinal documents, policy documents, and then there's a special mechanics in a way how they control and try to influence every single the segment of, of let's say, information delivery, if you wish. 
TV. They have, you know, they have weekly, weekly meetings uh, with the representatives of Kremlin, all the main uh, editors and the main chiefs of the media TV, they are they're having this meeting, kind of educational. Like a Soviet time was politruk, you know, the political kind of brain was uh, funds, very, very, very effective way, new, new, new phenomena. Actually, not very new, but uh, developing as a, one of the most powerful compatriotic organizations. This is, uh, again, it's a bit lessons learned from Crimea. I think they 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 used uh, like Nachni uh, Volk. There is a um, bikers organization, you know, called Nachni Volk and Night Night Wolves. I believe direct translation of Night Wolves, uh, as a kind of a representative of society of, of 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 Russian people who want to support and but they're developing more and more. They're, and in, if there is a kind of trouble in our region, there will be definitely more smart smarter scenarios. I call it Green Man Plus Plus. I don't know how many plus you could put, but in kind of very developed one. They definitely will not step the same shoes and, and they'll use more efficiently all this kind of, this chart and many others too. Um, you see synchronizations, messaging, this side, foundings and then an international side. And then they are very good to create uh, this audience segmentation. They definitely use different narratives, different, different arguments, even figures talking to Ukrainians in Ukraine and Russia back, approaching their people, compatriots, and foreign countries. You, you, you know, ambassadors and the process, you know, you very well don't need to convince to the, they are having uh, the segmentation down to even single nation, single country, I would say. And then even down to political maybe parties in, uh, within this country in particular. They are very, very effective. They are very effective, unbelievably effective, I believe. What they say, that they're going to say, particularly about EFP. No, of course, main, you can see. It's in bold. Actions are provocative, aggressive, most courage. NATO is unwelcome, troops are occupiers, Baltic states are paranoid and, and Russophobic. Um, NATO's threat to Russian populations in the Baltic states. It's absolute, absolute, uh, and it's the last, last. To, but, but no, the more uh, untruthful, let's say, uh, statement. I can speak for Latvia. You know, we all, everyone, a lot of people are speaking about Russian, so called Russian speaking population. First of all, I would like to say this is the, the worst definition we can describe the uh, situation. It's, it's the, it was used by Putin, I don't know, years ago, 10, maybe a decade ago. Because he was saying Russian-speaking population, he was speaking on behalf of Belarusians, Ukrainians. There are Ukrainian demonstrations against the Russian, the front of the Russian embassy in Riga. So it means, probably he, he, can, he may speak about behalf of Russians, I don't know, even so, but, but definitely not, 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 not a threat. We were, we were a bit lucky. We lost just seven soldiers in combat in these operations in these years. So, even one is too much, but 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 anyway, in seven, in, in the years what we what we spend it in Afghanistan, in Iraq, two of them are uh, from Russian-speaking populations, probably families. They are Latvians, but no, from Russian. I, I know I know both families. I met mothers, both mothers and fathers, both fathers too, actually. Yeah. Uh, mother, one of the families, speak very. No, real, no bad Latin, I would say, you know. But but this they, they, they their sons, they were in, in, in the Latvian defense system, the army. They were fighting, they were killed, they were killed in operation. So, let's get just this example. Another example, number two deputy of, 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 of uh, the Latvian defense force, he, general, is, can say, family tongue is, is Russian. So, so situation is, is different than, than the, the trying to, Putin trying to portray components. We can split it kind of three, three parts. Uh, uh, soldiers, mm -hmm. you can read. Beating locals, conflicts, no respect to local rules, and etc., etc. You can name it. You can, actually, this line can be developed a uh, very long one. Uh, and, 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 uh, but we've got a good example. For instance, Americans, they are in the Latin soil, in the Baltic, actually, in general, since uh, 2014, summer. So, and, and, and really, and, I try to remember any conflict which kind of hit headlines or something, you know. Uh, no, 
Well, they're very disciplined, and I believe absolutely confident they'll be this unit AFP will be so disciplined. But you cannot, of course, there are there are some minor uh, incidents, but not like uh, 150 uh, company or two, a thousand uh, young uh, men, male and female. Of course, there could be some some but 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 not not the headline hitting history. This is very interesting. Uh, there are. The West is moving east again, meaning Germans. I will, I will show you a couple examples how the trolls are portraying uh, German, uh, German uh, EFP, like, like German, yeah, like the EFP in, 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 in Lithuania. Threat, of course, all these moves will lead to World War III. Russia is not guilty, NATO is aggressive. Simple, simple, simple messages, but I think I, I covered a bit partly. This. This one example, maybe some, some, maybe some of you noticed it was early this year. Maybe you can it was, well, it was somewhere. Ah, January fourth, yeah, January fourth. This year, the message I read this message in uh, Latvian news. One of the Delphi uh, sharing Delphi with, uh, with Estonia too. In Delphi news and. 3,000 uh, tanks, uh, uh, American tanks, uh, German, uh, America is sending 3,000 tanks to Europe. And of course, it's picked by Russian uh, news, and, 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 and it, was, it was kind of a big deal. 4th of January, very well selected time. Politicians are still in vacation, and now there's no quick response. And, and, and the story was on, 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 on screens and the laptops for about almost two full days, which is quite a lot, actually, because it's, it's fake news. How it was organized? NATO Center of Excellence for Strategic Communication, which is located in Riga, they did research. They discovered the first author of this Donetsk channel, Donny.com. Uh, they launched this. It was picked up by this kind of marginal, marginal friends of Syria, some other marginal important uh, media. But, uh, but the, what's interesting was global, it's a pick by a global research, which is located in dot Canada. Yeah, and then Russian Ria Novosti took us a Western news. It what it wasn't anymore Donetsk news or Donetsk site. It was it was it was yeah, it was West as we got from Western sources from Canada, Americans are moving to Europe. So good, and then the news has spread it. And as I said, even Latvian, Latvian uh, journalists who are a bit trained to, to be selective, uh, they, 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 they bite, they took this bite. It was, it was in Latvian newspapers. So very quickly, just examples. This is Lithuania, because uh, you, the Canadians, you are since yesterday, Germans are already uh, almost two months. This picture, German tanks crossing 41, 41, 17. Yeah, similar to so much money going to spend just to keep uh, feed uh, aggressors. This is very powerful. This is real uh, NATO. Uh, sorry, it's real Nazi posture from I don't know whatever 46. I don't know this was in Lithuania. What they did, with NATO. Re replace swastikas by NATO, NATO, NATO insignia, and, 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 and yeah, so like, uh, Germans are back, NATO are occupiers, and you see, of course, Lithuanian, Lithuanian soldiers are cleaning shoes, American, I think it's American, yeah, girls using, uh, enjoying the free ride on a PC or something like that. Another one, it was said there when the Germans stepped on, on, on Lithuanian soil. You can read yourself, actually. Uh, can you can you read from the uh, this one? Yeah, yeah. As a rape, underage girl was raped. And this was let send letter was sent to 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 to, to speaker, and then it was picked by by news and and, and why well, not not response? They blamed. And you see, it was censored, controlled, by by this good 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 say background for for conspiracy theory immediately, but the blog. Auraspress.wordpress.com had just one this post, never, never was used after. So just created just for this fake, and it was, it, it's a, it's bait was taken actually, bait was taken. You know, 
Of course, at the end of the day, there's no, no victim, no, no, no general soldier, but yeah, how it works. Very easy, very cheap way to fight this war. That's the final slide. Um, you can read, we agree with, with Trump, 2% is it's fair. And, 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 but I will, you can, I will stop the last one, praise for the, the turns. I believe having real force on Baltic soil and eastern frontiers of NATO is the best way to deter, it's the best way to prevent conflict, it's the best way even I would say to prevent possible war. And for Canadians, uh, I would say, as in, we do remember history when Canadians uh, came to help uh, Europe to fight against Nazis in 1944, D-Day, Juno Beach. You lost 2,000 soldiers on Juno Beach just to enter Europe. A week ago, you landed in Riga International and using rural ships peacefully in order to not to have a war and not to lose another 40,000, what, what Canadian Canada did uh, during the war in total. So thank you very much. Presentation. And <laughs> there's one, one chap smarter than me. This is our victory. Um, Andrew Rasoulis, um, formerly the Defense Department and now with Canadian Global Affairs Institute. I was particularly struck with your slide on exercises. Uh, in the Cold War days, I was responsible for arms control, conventional arms control on the Canadian side, and uh, we were big on uh, exercises as a prelude to a surprise attack. So in the arms control negotiations in Vienna, uh, we came up with Vienna Document 90 and its successors, but the idea was to, if you had exercises over 10,000 troops, you would call observers. The idea no, 12 and a half. Say again? 12 and a half. 12, now it's 12 and a half. Okay, oh, so yeah. it's gone up. The point being that if those numbers, the, the Russian numbers are, many of them exceed that number. So under the Vienna document provisions, uh, there should be observers. I've not seen anything reported in the press, and I, and I remember no. some time ago, the Russians rejected the CFE treaty. Uh, there is an answer, because for instance, uh, how, they, how they put together these figures. Uh, during the Zapad, when Zapad 13 happened, the simultaneously, simultaneously there were uh, four exercises up north, middle, down in Moscow uh, defense, defense region around Moscow. Coincidence? No, they are, they are, and they, of course, they kept separate. They are separate, not related, not related exercises. So didn't, they didn't go over 12,000. It means they didn't invite uh, observers and, and follow all uh, procedure, what you, what, you, what you had mentioned. It was they, they cheating this way. There's a, suddenly during this exercise, Zapad exercise period, there is a snapshot exercise. The Geras, uh, Gerasimov for Shaigu comes down to, 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 to railway uh, the sea units and test their capability to bring uh, troops uh, from uh, Central Military District down to Western Military District with something like 10,000 almost em employed people. So it's, it's why I didn't separate, but otherwise you would get the very period, small bars, you know, will be very wide, red, 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 red line. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's a good question, yeah. It's the way how, they, how they're behaving. Even, 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 in, even within Zapad, with the same region, they had separate Sadruzist, the so-called excess Sadruzist in, in, in Belarusian territory, uh, parallelly, parallelly to, 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 to the Zapad exercise. How is it possible to separate exercise? I can't imagine on Latvian or on Baltic soil to simultaneous exercise uh, uh, heading by the same, let's say, uh, general staff. Uh, this is this is this is the point. Of course, it was orchestrated and controlled from from Moscow, and, and otherwise, there's no even no 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 sense to have such an exercise and not not, not, to, not to provide full command control from top. I'm Dotsa Johansson. So my heritage is Latvian, but raised in North America. I'm and I was in Riga for seven years after the wall came down with the World Bank before you joined the European Union. I just keep wondering, after all those people left Latvia, not many even know. Most, most of my friends or relatives never say they're Latvian. 
because nobody knows what Lat about Latvia. And, I, I, and when we were there for seven years, nobody really came to visit because they are still very, what's that word, Russia-phobic. <laughs> So I don't know how many go back and how many want to visit. More people here, of a, certainly of uh, Estonia, but they had very close ties with uh, Finland, right? Only three hours away. I did all those countries. But I just think all the Latvians that I know, I don't know what your stats show, how many really go back or want to go back, because it's what you call annihilation of a race. Thank you. Hmm, thank you. No, I, I think it's more question to, to Ambassador, I believe. But <laughs> oh, oh, always the question is to me, tough to him. Uh, and, uh, but no, uh, I think you, you know answer better than I do. Uh, because if you if you got profession, you got work or pension or whatever, you're related to this community socially. I mean, even getting benefits, social, and then coming back to Latvia, if you're not very rich, very wealthy, it's, uh, I think, it's difficult to start another life, sad, second or, or sad time even, you know. Um, uh, but I can say what I can say in military field, uh, before NATO, after as well, but particularly before NATO, I got, uh, we had in our general staff an MOD number of advisors from uh, Australia, United States, a uh, couple, there's an ambassador from Canada of origin, he was, he was from Canadian immigration, Hitchman's. but uh, from the United States we had at least uh, 10 lieutenant colonels, one Navy, Navy captain, another colonel, British one star brigadier, yeah, UK as well, Kajot Sinchianis. Yeah, so, Varyuch Freiberg, so our president. No, no, there were a number of people came back actually, and, 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 but, uh, but I don't know numbers, and, but, but you know the reasons I, I believe better than I do. Roger Rickwood, uh, University of Ottawa, Political Studies. Uh, I uh, have seen criticism uh, on the web about the Canadians going to uh, uh, Latvia. Uh, they, I, I think it's coming from Russian sources, but they've dug up uh, one of our ex-colonels who is a murderer uh, and uh, mm. portraying our people or our soldiers as some kind of devils uh, coming to uh, aid you or suppress you. Um, uh, can you comment on this kind of propaganda that's being used against the Canadians? Because uh, on the face of it, uh, some people might believe it. Uh, I certainly don't believe it. Uh, I, will, I will start, first of all, be ready. Expect this is easy case. It's a very easy case. Yeah, be ready, then we'll try to influence your hearts and minds, I would say, of, of, of uh, Canadian Canadian citizens. You know, just blaming Canadians are not welcomed in Latvia. There will be fake Latvia, maybe in the interviews. and They will be, they'll be using different techniques, like honey traps, for instance, girls, and, and then they will be provoked, uh, and drunk. I don't know. There's uh, dozens, many dozens of different techniques and tactics. How to, how to, but, 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 but simply we must be, we have to be ready. As simple as it, all my answer. Actually, this, this is case, no. People on the spot in Latvia, they're welcoming, very much welcoming, welcoming uh, Canadians. And, and, and I, I haven't seen any serious kind of negative reflection uh, because you are not a superpower, you're not colonial past, you know, you don't have, you, you, you may argue, Sometimes nations like mine maybe would like some, you know, countries which could be blamed a bit, you know, the colonial, the colonial past or historical uh, past. No. I, but one thing I want to mention, what is actually we're talking, we're speaking about Canadians, but, uh, but, but we should bear in mind that in this Canadian-led uh, battle group, they are representative from the southern flank of, 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 of NATO. We've got soldiers, 3,300, I wish I have 3,000, but 300 uh, Spaniards, uh, almost 200, a bit less than 200 uh, Italians. 
And what I think, what Russia didn't like, is it was more this one. They could expect uh, Americans will be there, Germans, yes, Brits, yeah, Canada too, actually, most likely. So, but they didn't want to see the, the you know, thousand friends, at least, countries which are more supportive uh, to, to Russian foreign policy. Say, but, but they are there. This is this is message. This is strong message. Seventeen nations are taking taking part in this operation. Seventeen nations out of twenty eight to twenty nine now. Next year, uh, planning to raise this for this numbers up to twenty three. This is signal how strong and united we are. This is answer. This is a real red line. Uh, and 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 this strongest message actually are our coherence and unity. Uh, thank you again, uh, Lieutenant General uh, Goba, for your excellent presentation today. Uh, one of the challenges we face is that uh, Latvia is relatively new to Canadian foreign policy, so there's not a whole lot known about the situation there. Uh, the challenges ahead that we're facing a very um, imaginative uh, adversary with the ways that the Russians are going to try to portray us. and so. It's good to have uh, your voice today to tell us what we're going to be facing in, in, the, in the years ahead, not just the days, weeks, months, but years ahead. Uh, so we appreciate your, your insights, and we look forward to uh, working with your country uh, for a good long time as we face uh, this situation. So thanks again for coming out today. We really appreciate it. And we have a small token, which is a pack. Can you go to the next?